How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to another tutorial video on NHL 24. Today going through the trade deadline update for how to make your roster salary cap compliant. Of course for franchise mode. Now that EA's trade deadline roster has come out dated March the 11th of 2024, we can look at this roster with all of the trades, all the extensions built in and say what kind of alterations can we make for franchise mode so as to keep things realistic since LTIR long-term injured reserve is not taken into consideration. Why this video in particular is so important is because this is the last major update for the rosters until NHL 25, basically. Little things will happen over the next few months for NHL 24 roster updates from EA, but this is pretty much the final major update. Now, if you're going to be using these rosters in April, May, June, July, as we wait for NHL 25, you're going to see some major issues when you go into franchise mode because of LTIR. For teams like Colorado, teams like Vegas especially, teams like Tampa Bay, you will see some very wonky numbers and it's not going to add to the experience. For example, if I were to start a franchise mode with these rosters, even especially the rosters back in October, and I went to, to use the Colorado Avalanche, I would see Nathan McKinnon's eight year contract of 12.6 million be 11.7 million. I would see Devontae's seven year extension at 7.25 be seven years at about 6.5, I think. So not only does it take away from the challenge that you would have as general manager, it would also make it easier for the AI teams to build super teams and just make things look even weirder as the years go by. If I see an AI GM of Vegas being allowed to have Jack Eichel at 8.9 million instead of the 10 million that he's actually paid, well, that changes things very much. You start with these trade deadline rosters, especially after everything Vegas did with Tomas Hurdle and Anthony Mantha, etc. Eichel's making about 8.8. .8. Stone is making about 8.3. Really big differences when it comes to a franchise mode save. So to keep everybody making the same amounts of money that they're supposed to be making, what I did is I went through the entire NHL and I added or took away from the salary of certain players on certain teams, usually players who are on expiring contracts, so it has the least amount of impact long term, just beyond one season in your franchise mode. And what I'll be doing in this video is showing you what those changes were. There are many different ways you can go about doing certain changes. Like, I don't know, for example, like on the Coyotes, uh, before I get into doing the Coyotes, the Coyotes actually had to have money added to their salary cap because they were way under. So I had to, on these rosters, the EA rosters, you have Clayton Keller making 7 million. At the bottom, you have players who are gone, like Shea Weber, uh, Voracek, Little, all at league minimum. Essentially, if a player is retired, but not really retired, the carry prices and Shea Weber's of the world, they're put as 70 overall and on league minimum. But in reality, their money is being used by the team. Teams like Tampa with Brent Seabrook, Toronto with Jake Muzzin and Matt Murray, etc, etc. So what I'm going to do right here is show you the changes that I made to the salary, but it's not the only change that could be made. Like I just said, Brian Little, I added some money to him so that Arizona could get to the cap floor. Or you could just add like 7 million to Sean Dursey and 7 million to JJ Moser. As long as I'm really making sure that I'm adding it to expiring contracts, and not one to have term for many, many years. So let's start running through the changes that I made for the trade deadline March 11th EA rosters. No overall changes, no added prospects or anything. These are just salary cap compliance rosters. When I add my other things to it, that's a separate roster. That'll be data franchise rosters. This is data cap compliance. So Anaheim Ducks, no changes necessary. Arizona Coyotes, as I said, got to add some salary big time. Brian Little, one year, 15 million. I think you can squeeze by with like 14.7, but 15 million is the max contract you can give. I said, Hey, may as well go for the max one year, 15 million on Brian Little could be to Voracek could be to Weber, but I think one of those three would be the best scenario. Then whoever you don't give that money to, let's say for my case, it was Weber and Voracek. You would transfer those players off of the team, essentially removing them from the NHL. And I'll show you at the end of this video, how to do that. Use the timestamp. If you want to see how to remove players, how to transfer players, Boston, Buffalo, no changes needed. Calgary, no changes needed, but for the four players who are still in the NHL, technically, uh, from the Team Canada scandal. Personally, I would take those players out of the roster because I don't think they're playing in the NHL anytime soon, at least the next couple of years while the trial's going and everything. So Zubi, McLeod, Foot, Hart, I would be taking those four players out and transferring them to an international team. So Zubi, I hadn't taken them out because 
Technically, according to the cap compliant rosters, they are not needed to be removed for cap compliance. But if you want it for realism, I would definitely take out those players because I don't think they'll be in the league over the next couple seasons at the very least. So Calgary, no changes needed really. Carolina, Chicago, nothing. The Colorado Avalanche now, there's a couple options now for Colorado. Gabriel Landeskog, I would personally keep him on the roster because it's being rumored that he's coming back for the playoffs. At the very least, he'll probably be back next season. Will he be back for long? Could he re-aggravate the injury and then it is career ending? You never know. But it does seem as though Landeskog is trending towards coming back to play. So I would prefer to keep Landeskog in my lineup. If you want to take him out of the lineup, then that's it. You don't need to do anything else. But if you're keeping Landeskog in, you just got to do two things. Devontae's, you need to reduce the salary, not the extension, the salary of Devontae's from 4.1 million down to league minimum 775k. It has no consequence really on anything because the year after his seven year extension at 7.25 will kick in. So one year at league minimum, one year at 20 million, whatever it is, it's one season at a price will, which will then change long term. So it doesn't really matter what he's making and it should be an easy way to just free up cap space. The other change you got to make is to Miko Rantanen from 9.25 million down to 8 million. The reason why you got to do Rantanen is because the Avalanche are also over the salary cap into 2024-25. So to keep the Devontae's extension from being altered for seven years, and Rantanen only has one more year on his contract after that, you got to find a player who has two years left and makes him enough money. And unfortunately, it's only Rantanen. No other player is signed on for two years and makes enough money. Everybody else is signed on for three years or more. And then that goes into affecting the longer term. Term, I don't like it. So it's unfortunate that Rantanen's one of the best players in Colorado, but it is a small change. 9.25 down to 8 million. Columbus, no changes. Dallas, one small change you got to make to Hakanpa. He'll be going from 1.5 million down to league minimum at 775. Detroit, Edmonton, Florida, no changes needed. The LA Kings, one small change. You want to once again change the salary, not the extension of Anze Kopitar from 10 million down to 8 million. Keep the extension the same at 7 million. There will be no problem. But for 2023-24, you'll have to reduce his salary by 2 million from 10 down to 8. Minnesota, nothing. Canadians, nothing, but you can transfer out Carey Price, who would be as a 70 overall. I already did it, so he's not in the roster, but 70 overall Carey Price could be transferred out. Nashville, nothing. New Jersey, you can transfer out uh, Michael McLeod right here. And there's also Cal Foote, who's on the AHL Utica Comets squad. So you have to go into the AHL teams to do that. But McLeod and Foote, both in the Devils organization. Islanders, no changes. Rangers, a couple changes because of their deadline moves and the changes you make will be to those players pretty much. As you'll be reducing Alex Wendt from his 2.25 million down to league minimum at 775k as well as Jack Roslevic from 2 million down to 1 million so two minor changes there for the Rangers to keep them cap compliant Senators no changes Flyers you might want to go in and remove Carter Hart that would be my recommendation there for the goaltending Pittsburgh Penguins one small change here as well as you'll want to go and find Jeff Carter and reduce his salary from 3.125 million down to 2 million San Jose Seattle St. Louis no issue Tampa Bay was a complicated one, I'll tell you that. Again, different ways you can do it, but here's my way. First and foremost, Matt Dumba from 3.9 million being reduced to league minimum at 775. Same thing for Anthony Duclair being reduced from 3 million to 775K. And one other small change would be Steven Stamkos on an expiring deal, reduced from 8.5 million down to 7.25 million. So it is a bit heavier on the impact for these players as that's like 383 plus overall players who are getting reduced. But that I believe is the best way for the Tampa Bay Lightning to stay cap compliant. Dumba and Duclair down to league minimum. Minimum, Stamkos down from 8.5 to 7.25. And on top of that, you would also be transferring out Brent Seabrook. Over in the Toronto Maple Leafs, just a small change here. On top of a couple of players getting transferred out, that being uh, Jake Muzzin and Matt Murray. But for the salary changes, Austin Matthews, you'll want to bring him down from 11.64 million to 9.5 million. Just the salary, not the extension. The extension still stays at 13.25. Nylander 11.5, no problems. But for 2023-24, just bring Austin Matthews down a couple million, or you could even do it for William Nylander. Again, doesn't really matter since these are players who are on big long-term extensions. So there's Toronto. Vancouver, no changes needed. Now here's the big one you've been waiting for, the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, there are two options for Vegas, just like with Colorado. The first option, which is the one I would recommend the most, would be to remove Robin Leonard from the team. He's still an 85 overall, making 5 million here in the most recent roster, but 
I would say it's more likely that Leonard doesn't play again than it is that Landeskog doesn't play again. So you can have it both ways. I'll tell you what to do. But my recommendation would be to remove Robin Leonard from the team. It also helps because then the game won't be trying to trade all their good goalies and making crazy things. So transferring out Robin Leonard would be step one to save you five million. After that, you'll want to reduce Alec Martinez from 5.25 million down to league minimum. You'll want to reduce Anthony Mantha from... 2.85 million to 2 million, and you'll want to reduce William Carrier from 1.4 million to 775k. So really, it's not the craziest thing. It's a lot of money, but it's only three players you're making alterations to who are 83 overall or under. Now, if you want to keep Robin Leonard in, essentially, you need to find a way to clean up 5 million through any combination, any division of expiring deals. So if you need to clean up five more million, you could say, okay, I'm gonna take two million off Marc Chasseau, I'm gonna take two million off Stevenson, I'm gonna take 500K off Hannafin, I'm gonna take 500 more K off of uh, Mantha. There's a few ways you could do it. So it's possible, but then you'll be affecting your top, top players. Already, I'm sure the AI will be trying to do stuff with Hannafin at 1.24 million, but that's how it works with salary retention. So you could keep Robin Leonard, but my suggestion would would be to transfer him out and then only have to make changes to Martinez, whose season with Vegas is probably already over anyways, Mantha by a little bit, and Carrier down to league minimum, who's already an 81 overall. Nothing too crazy. So you, you, know, you would have thought it would be super crazy. It's not that that bad when you take out Robin Leonard. For the Washington Capitals, no changes, but you can remove Nicholas Backstrom and uh, transfer him to an international team. And Winnipeg, no changes are necessary. So there are the 32 teams, ladies and gentlemen. You can follow those steps from this video. Go ahead and check out the Puckpedia article, which will be linked in the description as soon as the article is up. A big thank you to the team over at Puckpedia. I've been doing articles for them since NHL 22 on making salary cap compliant rosters. So I'm happy to have this one up again. Or, as I said, if you're playing on the PS4 version, for example, I play on the PS5, but with the PS4 version, because I already bought it, of NHL 24. If that is the case, you can go ahead and go over to roster sharing, uh, click on download community files. Because this is a newer one, you'll have to scroll quite a bit to find it, but you'll wanna look at the date uploaded or the creator, that would help you out. If you sort by date uploaded, you'll likely find it a lot more quickly as here it is right there, data cap compliant. Oh, boy, already five downloads. I put this like an hour ago. Okay, you guys work fast. So data cap compliant two, uh, uploaded on March 13th, 2024 by day 782. That will be the roster that you're looking for. So if I can't download those rosters, I wanna make the changes myself. As you would have seen a couple seconds ago, all you got to do to edit a player is go to the more tab, click on rosters, then click on edit player. You'll click on NHL. From NHL, you'll select the team, you'll select the player. And once that player is selected, you can scroll down to I for details. You'll click on the little information for details, scroll down to the salary, and you can change it whatever you like it to be. It goes very quickly now. That's a great new change in uh, NHL 24, that patch that came in a few months ago. When you're ready, click exit, click save. I'm going to discard it, obviously, but you can click save and as long as that is your active roster that will be that player's salary when you start the franchise mode so really make sure that whatever roster you're using it's active not that a different one is checked off so again you would do that by going to click on active roster but if you want to make player movement you want to change play you want to remove players or even do other trades or whatever you want to do it would be the same thing the more tab click on rosters scroll down to player movement on the left side you'll select the player that you want to move let's say i wanted to select a carter hart i wanted to move him off the philadelphia flyers i would go to philadelphia i would select carter hart pressing square on playstation on the left side, where am I transferring him to? On the leagues, I would scroll down to international and transfer him to any international team. I don't know, Hungary, why not? Hungary, welcome, Carter Hart to Hungary. So that's ex essentially it. If that's my active roster, when I start the franchise mode, Carter Hart will no longer be there. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the alterations that are necessary to keep your roster salary cap compliant for franchise mode on HL 24 as of EA's most recent March 11th roster for the trade deadline. If you have any questions, please let me know down here in the comments. I'll get back to you ASAP. Or you can join us in our Discord server, link in the description. We're always talking sports and franchise. We're over 600 in the server, so that'll be a great place to bounce your ideas or your questions off of others. On top of that, leave a like if the guide was helpful. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. We'd love to have you join the team. Guides, walkthroughs, tutorials for everything NHL 24 franchise mode. My own NHL 24 franchise mode series going on as well. And much more here on the channel. So if you're a franchise mode fan of any sport, really, this is the channel for you. And we'd love to have you join the team. Thanks again for watching. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you again in the next one.